Okay. Recording has started and we can start officially. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, workshop where we will be speaking about the WeWare 3D Asset Manager. Um, this session is part of a, a, a larger a sets of sessions where we are presenting the tools that have been developed within the Weave project, a project that has been co-financed by the European Union as part of the Connecting Europe facility. Today, um, we will be, as said, talking about Weaver 3D Asset Manager. Uh, myself, Mateusz Strauss, and Vesna Kobal, my colleague, uh, both of us are coming from Arctur, a company from uh, Slovenia. Uh, we'll be presenting this tool. Uh, we've split the whole session into two parts uh, where we will be uh, talking about uh, we're really talking about uploading 3D assets, enriching the data, uh, and using the measurement tools that are within the Weaver 3D Asset Manager. Uh, we'll try to be as practical as possible. Uh, so we will be, we don't have much, uh, much presentation. Uh, we will be sharing our screens and going with you through the all the processes. Um, so please um, stop us in between, ask questions, um, ask for repetition if needed. Uh, just try to, let's try to make this session as interactive as possible. Really, again, uh, do not hesitate to stop us and ask questions uh, in between. Um, so as said, uh, first we will take a look at the uh, upload of the assets, uh, and then we will um, take a look at the measurement tools on the uploaded assets. Um, what is, maybe initially, what is Weaver 3D Asset Manager? Is a tool that has, that had the mission uh, and still has the mission to, um, to host and um, uh, present uh, 3D assets online. Um, we know that this is often the, the challenge with large 3D uh, objects, 3D models, that they are just too, too big, um, and too, too complex, um, to be viewed within the browser. So they need special software, which is uh, inhibiting many of the potential users to use them. And this is especially the case of the cultural heritage sector where uh, the available hardware and software is um, of course often not um, uh, up, up uh, with the current trends, unfortunately. Um, so this is why Weaver 3D Asset Manager has been developed to, um, to help the users to upload 3D models easily, uh, and then also to view 3D models within their browser, um, fast, reliable, um, and also uh, to have some tools that, where, that they can use within uh, the browser and within the tool. Uh, the data that is hosted on the uh, Weaver 3D Asset Manager can be later further uh, shared uh, to Europeana and um, can, uh, so can be also then viewed within Europeana. Currently, uh, the Weaver 3D Asset Manager has more than 200 assets that are, um, that are uh, categorized within 11 categories in seven time periods. Um, and of course, this, uh, this collection we hope will be growing um, with the use. The, um, we are just starting uh, launching the, the viewer um, in these weeks. So uh, let's say that the, the full, um, uh, the future is in front of us uh, and we are just at the beginning. So before we continue, I would now like to uh, give the, the floor to Vesna Kobal. Uh, Vesna is uh, Chief Technology Officer for Tourism 4.0 at Arctur. And together with Vesna, we will go through some of the steps um, of uploading a 3D model to the viewer 3D asset manager. 
Vesna, hi. <laughs> hi, Mateusz. Thank you very much for your introduction. I will share my screen. I have already prepared some materials for you to look. Okay. You, you probably already know the three, uh, with three the we, uh, viewer page. Uh, where we have already uploaded, uh, as Mateo said, uh, said, more than 200 different models. So this is basically the viewer. I will just show you briefly how to search models. You can use uh, search engine. For example, if I want to look at castle, uh, the search will automatically find me everything that has castle in name or anywhere in description. Or perhaps you can use uh, narrow your search by using categories. For example, I would like to see people. And here is a list of all uh, of all 3D models that are any and in any manner uh, associ associated with people. This is a statue. Here are some portraits. I can also search by periods. For example, Middle Ages. And here is the list of uh, all periods. This is short uh, view of functionalities, but now I will focus on uploading uh, a new model. Here I have uh, a link that says new asset, and I would like to upload it here. Cli I click, and here is a form that I uh, should fill in to upload the model. I have already prepared a zip file with 3D model. It contains all the necessary uh, uh, all the necessary data sets uh, that 3D model needs. In, the, in my case, I have FBX file and JPEG file with um, uh, with textures. Because I don't have uh, appropriate software to look it up, look to open this and look the model, I will just upload it here as a zip file. I will close it. It, uh, but it needs to be zip file, not R R uh, R file. So please use zip files. And how do I start? I can uh, use functionality drag and drop, or I can simply browse. I select my zip file and open. Now the file is uploading uh, to the system, and while it uploads, I can also I can uh, fill in uh, the metadata about uh, this uh, cultural heritage and also about the uh, and also about uh, the model. Uh, here I can I, I can I, I still cannot preview the model since it has been converting to our 3D viewer. In, in the meantime, I will uh, start filling in uh, the metadata. This is Fountain in Gorni Grad. Very simple file. I will select a country. I, I already have a list. I, this is from Slovenia and I will also select category. Since this is a fountain, I will select, I will try to find a category that is most appropriate for this, and it goes to spiritual sac sacred heritage because this fountain is part of a larger Benedict Benedictinian monastery in uh, Slovenia. I I need to fill in ID. This is ID of. Slovenian uh, cultural heritage. I can fill in also time span. I think it's from the 19th and I can also select historical period. I will also enter short description. Forgive me, it is in Slovenian, but uh, you can also write down in English. I can also enter website where this asset is presented. And then I need to select license so that uh, users of, uh, 
of our portal know what can they do with uh, with this model. I will select public domain for uh, for purpose of this uh, of this uh, presentation because I will delete it uh, afterwards. I can also look at uh, the license more. Uh, what this if I don't know what which license to choose, I can also click here and find the description of this license. So you probably know this, I won't go into details. I, uh, now I will uh, check what has happened with uh, my model, but since I don't want that my data get lost, I will just from, to be safe, save. Uh, all the entered data. This is sometimes, you know, the internet falls or something happens. And if it's once it's safe, it's safe and it, it cannot be, uh, it, it doesn't uh, go missing. Now I can look at the model. I will just click. Here's the window and the model is loaded. I can turn, I can turn it. And I can also open some viewer functionalities. Mateusz will explain you uh, this later. Now I need to edit. I can rotate it and I can set background color. And I can also take screenshots so that I have a thumbnail for my, uh, for my model on the uh, viewer page. Now I'll just find the best angle, perhaps this one, and I will take a screenshot. I can set it as thumbnail and I can also download it. Uh, uh, here it is. If I can use it anywhere else. Now I will just save the change, save my changes. I can also add some annotations, for example, annotation one, and this is tap. And I can also describe. Just like this and save. Annotation is safe. I can add more uh, more annotation, but this is good for now. Save it, and I go edit some other data. You can see uh, I will uh, go to thumbnail, and I will select it. This one is here. I can enter uh, longitude, latitude, altitude if I want to have some uh, more detailed location. And here I have some, uh, and this is about the cultural heritage asset. Now, what I need to fill in is the, some data about, uh, metadata about uh, our model. I can enter a data provider, in our case, it's Arctur. Here is name of the client. This is development agency. And uh, rights holder. And I can enter also year of creation. I know it was last year. I can also enter accuracy. And this is in millimeters. And uh, accuracy, I can describe accuracy report and I can also select some dig dig digital capture technology. I will skip that. And I can also describe data processing software. This is about model. And if I want to pub publish this model to Europeana, I will just click say publish to Europeana. And now I need to save all the changes. I can preview. No, it's not. Uh, it's not visible here. My, it's, I find it in my assets. 
and I can send it to review. I can write, uh, if I want, I can send the message to reviewer or I can send it uh, without any comment. I will just, hello. In this case, the reviewer will receive an email notification. And since I have the rights to review the model, I can find this model here. Found time, Gorning Rat. I can also search it. It's this one. I can check if it has all the information that uh, that I need. I can also look it in details. And then I, if it's everything okay, the reviewer will uh, will publish your model or will request some changes from you. But uh, uh, regardless, you will be notified about everything. So me as a, re a reviewer, I have published your uh, this uh, model. So if I go to front page with all the other assets, I can try and find it. This one is my published. And uh, this is it. Any questions? It seems quite simple and it is simple. So what you need to have is that you prepare your 3D models in zip file with all necessary data and uh, wait that the model uploads and converts and then uh, you can start using it. That's it from my side. Now would be the time to, to have some questions for Vesna regarding the upload. Anyone, any questions, any dilemmas or any suggestions? Um, maybe can I ask a question? Yes. Um, yeah, it uh, looks really nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I am uh, working at Europeana, so I was uh, wondering, there is the button published to Europeana. Uh, what does that trigger? Uh, does it uh, <laughs> give a message or is it, does it yes. a <laughs> that, uh, For example, published Europeana generates XML file that is uh, automatically uh, sent to uh, photo consortium to uh, Valentina, uh, to Miss Valentina Bacchi or Bacchi, I don't know. Yeah. And she prepares that XML files, uh, XML file to import to Europeana, as you probably know. All, uh, all uh, assets that have been published in uh, this Weaver have already been published to Europeana. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, very clear, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when I uh, publish, because I have the right uh, as a reviewer, I can send it uh, to Europeana, you, won't see this. Uh, you won't see this uh, button unless you are an authorized reviewer. Then I can uh, generate XML file. Okay. Thank you. So as as you see, there are some uh, safety checks in between. So one of them is that all the models that have been uploaded before they are visible at three D viewer. Um, a re reviewer from our side needs to review and approve them. This is to avoid to have um, models that are uh, not well prepared, that are not uh, visible, that are that have some technical challenges, or also if from the content side there are some um, reservations. Let's say that they're not about cultural heritage, that they include uh, offensive uh, or or in any way other um, content that is not appropriate um, for this purpose. So this is one of the safety checks. Um, so before the model is approved on uh, Weave 3 d uh, Asset Manager. And the second uh, safety check is that, um, that the content before it goes to Europeana goes through 
a photo consortium. So it's it's not directly published. There there is a uh, an intermediary in between that also checks the XML files so that makes makes sure that the metadata is correct. Any other questions for Vesna? Uh, I have one more uh, information for you. So uh, if you would like to use uh, 3D view, viewer uh, and upload your 3D models, then you need to request username and password so you can log in. You can, uh, it's, uh, this is third uh, security step. So we know who uses and uh, how, uh, but we know who, who uses it. Okay. Yeah, and how so to contact that person. If yeah. you would like to test it, then just uh, let us know and we will set up your uh, login credentials. Okay, thank you, Vesna. I suggest that now we move to the part where uh, login is not needed. So um, this is what I will show you now. You can see now my screen, right? Yes. Yes. So now I'm logged in, but I can also log out. So you'll see that this is, so this is the part of the platform that is visible to anyone. Um, so users here can view um, and can use some tools, but they cannot upload or they cannot edit the, the models. And here I want to show you some of the part, some of the functionalities. Since I'm a, a local uh, enthusiast, I will choose a, uh, a model from my hometown. This is a water wheel, um, the, actually the oldest, the largest, Euro the largest European wooden water wheel still existing. Uh, it's inside of this building. What we have here is a 3D model of the building um, itself. Here is where the water came in and inside is the wheel. Um, and it's not visible anymore where the water went out. But anyway, so this is the model um, as, as any other of the more than 200 models. Here I can view what uh, uh, the uploader has, has provided, the, the data that the uploader has provided, um, can read about it. But the, the interesting parts are um, here in this, in this window. I will now uh, make it in a full screen mode so that you can see clearly. So here um, I can using the, the mouse or the tab, I can so uh, navigate around the 3D model. I can zoom in, uh, inspect for more. Uh, what, what you see compared to the, some other 3D, um, 3D viewers, is that, um, that the models are loaded quite quickly. Uh, and this is um, due to, uh, Vesna, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, due to the progressive loading. So um, the, the more you look, the, the better the image gets. You're right. Yeah. Uh, so the initially the, the image of the 3D model was, was very bad, but it was very fast. Um, and the more I go uh, closer, the, the better the, uh, the texture and the model um, gets. This is how we ensure that the, the use is uh, comfortable for the user. Um, here in the right bottom, we have the, this, these three lines, the burger uh, symbol. Um, and here we have, here opens a new uh, window where I can use some of the functionalities. Here initially we have where we can set the, the viewpoint. So the, from the left side, from the right side, from above and from below. So from below, not much is seen because in this case, of course, there is not much. I can also see it from the front. And this is the front that has been set by the uploader such as Vesna uh, before me. So this is what, what she said as the front side and the back side. Um, so this is something that is, uh, of course, due, uh, because of uh, how the uploader has set 
the front and the back. And I'll, it, I can also go back to the central view of the, of the model. Um, here below, I have some other tools as well. Um, and let's say that uh, for you who don't know that building, you're wondering how tall it actually is. And we use the measurement height. And I select the first point and then I go upwards. You see the, the blue line. And let's say that we measure it up to here. We see, so it's nine meters and 13 uh, centimeters um, yeah, high building. I can from here actually also continue. Um, or no, and then I have to um, have to clean it, and I can also so measure the distance between from the left to the right side like this. And from here I can continue, let's say, measure downwards. So here you see the distance is different than than, than before. This is the difference between measuring the distance and the height. The height only looks at the difference in the, in the height, while the distance where, where we measure from up to down measures the actual distance. Um, so in this case, I'm, it's not perfectly 90%, 90 degree. Um, that's why it, it's a little bit longer than before. But we could also, also do in this case is let's say we want to um, measure the surface of that triangular part here. So let's say that we want to um, renovate the, the roof and we want to appro approximately know how, uh, how much of the shingles we need. So we want to measure uh, this part here. Again, I go this, select the three points. Of course, the more accurate I am, the more accurate the, the measurement will be. And this is so 15.8 square meters. Um, so as I said before, the more accurate I am, the, the accurate the measures will be. I could, in between, I could I'll repeat it and I'll be even more accurate. Oppa. Here. Even closer to here. And way back. So yeah, see now it's the the number has changed, of course, because I was uh, more precise in defining the edges of this uh, surface. So what we measure here is the surface between um, the points that you select. Um, and um, here, be be careful in the distance, in the different heights, uh, and how you define uh, the surface. Another functionality that we could use in this case is, let's say that we want to know what is the what is the angle between that small roof and the larger part of the roof. So this is how I will measure it here using the third, third button. So what we will measure is the measure between two lines, the line of the, of the, this, the small roof. Uh, and the line of the, the, the big roof. No, I pressed something wrong. From here to here to here. Ah, here. Uh, 
and the angle is we see 23.8 degrees. So we, we all, whenever we use these, these tools, we need to click on the, uh, on the actual points on the model. So you cannot click outside of the model. Like this, okay. Um, and then now I went through all of the tools. And if anyone of you wants to measure me something, please ask me. Vesna, do you want to know something about the model or about the building in the model? Please let me know everything you know. I'm sure <laughs> you are one of the mo the biggest experts about oh, but, Idria but, heritage. But uh, you want me to measure something? Uh, yes, you can measure uh, the the larger surface of the roof. The larger surface of the roof, like that part here. Yes, of course. It has five. Uh, it has four different points. Yeah. So like this. Seventy-two point six, sixty-six square meters. Perfect. Thank so you. So, actually, the tools you, here are quite simple. Also, since the the model is loading quite fast, it's easy to um, to to change to to change positions to look at uh, look at the model from different points, and also much easier than to measure. Um, things. Otherwise, of course, you would need to wait for the model to load in between. So if anyone has any questions now, that would be the time. Um, maybe a question I have is mm -hmm. um, about, let's say, the, the future plans for this. And I mean, I can imagine that there are many things that you already have in mind. Um, and, uh, um, it, it's always the case, but maybe you can tell us what to what to expect for uh, for for the future. And um, another question I had was about um, the overall navigation in the model, how that is done. I um, and mm -hmm. uh, if there are any, let's say, special things that uh, that you do here. So I'll first try to answer regarding the navigation within the model. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel that there is any special ways of navigating. It's quite intuitive. Um, so I, I, um, I think there's no need to, to explain how, how it is because it's really intuitive. It's much easier with the mouse uh, to navigate than with the, with the tab. And um, Vesna, is there any how how to answer to that question? I mean, no, you can use it uh, the navigation uh, menu or uh, mouse or fingers. Yeah. If you uh, you can also uh, the pro, uh, the progressive loading of three D models uh, works perfectly on uh, any mobile device. So you can also go to uh, you you can also use your uh, mobile phone to check. Uh, to inspect the, the model and you use your fingers. It will work as good as uh, you can see now, but mm -hmm. we don't have any shortcuts on uh, keyboard, if you I mean, I think they don't work. But for example, what I'm now doing is I, I'm using a mouse and I grab a model and then I just rotate it. Yes. And then I leave it and repeat it. With the with the uh, scroller, scroller, the the circle scroller, I basically zoom in, zoom out, and these are the main functionalities. I can also, if I press the shift on my keyboard, and then with the with the with the mouse, I hold the model. I can change my position 
click upwards and downwards. Is there any other, Vesma, any other? Mm, no, I think this is... So, yeah, and if basically. I press uh, control, I, I can also change my position. So if I don't use, if I don't, uh, if I only use mouse, I'm, cha I'm rotating and changing the model itself. But if I press control, also my position is changing. Or not, not necessary. And yeah, Alex, to answer regarding the future plans. Uh, so of course, um, there's plenty of things that we could do to improve the viewer itself, uh, making it so even faster with even better um, textures and even better, um, so e even uh, better processing. Um, also adding new tools to this palette uh, would work. So different ways of uh, setting the camera, setting the light um, and so on. Hello, sorry. Uh, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, Craig, can, you, can we use Lion Reference when we rebuild if some defects are destroyed in the future? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I just lost a little bit in between. Can uh, we okay. use the... Uh, can we use Lion Reference when we rebuild uh, this uh, heritage if some detail of it are destroyed in the future? Vesna, can you answer that? I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the, the question. I, I was really, maybe oh. if you can, can you write, uh, because the connection, I think. Can you maybe write? Um... Yes. I tested it in the, in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So can can you I use it right. like reference when we? Ah, okay. You mean uh, effort? Uh -huh. is okay, a yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, like reference in the, uh, yeah, virtual reconstruction. Yeah, or, or even um, in in life. Of course, of course. Um, what what here? The the important part here is how the three D model is prepared before uploaded to the viewer. So basically we are just showing what is uh, what, what has been uploaded. So in the process of creating a 3D model, so 3D dig digitizing a model, it's very important that the model is geo-referenced, that it's accurate and that the textures are, um, are um, photorealistic as possible. Also what you can see, for example, in this model is that it doesn't have any shading, um, even though it was captured during the whole day and the shades have been moving throughout the day. So this is something that is part of the preparing the 3D model, not of um, uh, visualizing the 3D model within the, this tool. Um, so this is how, how to make sure that the, if the model is well prepared, if the 3D digitization has been accurate, from the point of uh, accuracy and also uh, the visual uh, part of it, then of course these um, these models can be used as a reference if I don't know something bad happens to the building itself, um, because here we see the the materials, the colors, the distances. Um, for this this model that we are looking at the at the moment. Um, I can say that the accuracy, so that the error uh, between the real life and the digital version is less than uh, 15 millimeters. So let's say that the distances that I have been recording, um, of course, might be uh, different than in real life, but maxim, uh, maxim, maximum 15 millimeters. Um, discrepancy. So if you can bear the 15 millimeters difference, then uh, yes, we can use it. Otherwise, of course, it's um, if you need uh, more detailed, a, a different model would need to be prepared. Um, so yeah, I hope I, I answered the question. Perhaps I would like, I, I can add some uh, additional feature that has uh, this 3D viewer. 
the models that have been uploaded here, you can easily embed to any other page. Perhaps, uh, Mateusz, you can show uh, your uh, case. Yeah. So, uh, um, as, as Vesna said, we can view the model at the, web, at the website, the view, viewer, but we can also embed it into a different website, an existing website. And for example, this is the, uh, a preview of a website of the destination, so uh, Idria, where they present this, uh, this uh, wheel. So this is the insides of the, the building. Um, and here you see the model is embedded within. And this is also similarly how, um, how it can be um, embedded to any other website. Currently, or, yeah. Or Europeana also. Or Europeana, yes. Um, so this is basically here inside, we see um, it, it functions the same way. This tab here is a little bit different because for the purposes of this website, it has been adapted and it doesn't have all the functionalities, but um, otherwise it's basically the same thing. Is, is there a way to currently specify for the embed, let's say, which, uh, which functionalities the viewer has? To specify this in a way, let's say, dynamically basic as some parameters in the embed? Uh, or is this a custom uh, modification then? Mm, it's a uh, general iframe uh, code that we uh, use it. And this uh, differentiation is, it must be done in, uh, in, the, in the background. So uh, users cannot uh, select which, uh, which menu or which design they can use okay. it in yeah. viewer. This, uh, Alex, this is maybe also an answer to your previous question, like what are still <laughs> options, you know, yes. where, where else we could go? I mean, it's endless possibilities, you know, what can be done. And of course, every, every user with a different use case could, would want to, to change the design, change the, 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 the out view. Um, yeah, so. But currently, not currently not. Do we have any other question? So this, the functionalities that I've been showing now are basically open um, for everyone, anyone that um, wants to, no needs for login, no need for registration. Um, yeah. And currently we have mostly 3D models from Slovenia and, and uh, Portugal, right? In Spain. In Sp Spain, sorry. Spain, of course. So if we don't have any other questions, then I would conclude this session first. And I would also like to invite you to the uh, website, weave-3dviewer.com, uh, where you can, as we said, uh, try out the functionalities. Some functionalities are uh, visible and you can use without the login and others for others, you need a login. So for uploading 3D models, you need uh, a login and um, basically you need to request to register and we will provide you with a username. Um, so yeah, try it yourself. Uh, enjoy the, um, enjoy the, view, the, the viewer, the use of the viewer. And if you need any help or if you have any suggestions, also uh, if you have any cases where you would want to use the tool, uh, please contact us, uh, Vesna and Mateusz, and we will be happy to, to help you. And maybe one, uh, one last point is that uh, we have a very short questionnaire that uh, would be very grateful if you uh, take uh, two, three minutes to, 
to select from some multiple choice questions, basically. <laughs> I put the link in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, that would be, it would be great. So uh, feel free to do it now or uh, just after the call. It's best yeah, so if you do it directly because all the information is fresh and um, you just have to select basically a few answers and that's it. Yeah, so the link is in the chat and we can wait a few few more minutes for everyone to, to get the link, to check the link and use it. And I will also do it in the meantime. <laughs> it's always a great reminder, right? <laughs> I believe we can officially conclude the session. I hope that you've um, went to the, this quick questionnaire and that you filled in. The, your feedback is very much appreciated. Uh, many of the questions are regarding the future plans um, and uh, how you would improve the tool. So thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Bye. everyone. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye.